Breaking news this morning out of Franklin County, news that has affected our WDBJ7 family very deeply. Our WDBJ7 morning crew was live this morning at Smith Mountain Lake when shots were fired around 645. And um, our general manager and WDBJ7 Vice President Je Jeff Marks is here um, you can, to tell us more about what happened. Kim, uh, it is my uh, very, very sad duty to report that uh, we have determined uh, through the help of the police and uh, our employees that uh, Allison and Adam died this morning shortly after 645 when the shots rang out. Uh, uh, we do not know the motive. We do not know who the suspect or who the killer is. Uh, we do know that uh, the Franklin County Sheriff, I just got off the phone with Franklin County Sheriff Overton. I just got off the phone before that with the state police. They are uh, 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 working very diligently to track down both the motive and the uh, the person responsible for this terrible crime against two fine journalists. A walk among the stars, the monsters, the paranormal, and supernatural. Join your tour guides, Justin and Josh, on this cryptic journey through life and beyond. What you may not know is you've been on this journey for a long time and you finally arrived. Join us and our cult by subscribing to this podcast and giving us a generous five-star rating. With doing so, your soul will be set and the afterlife defined. Welcome to It's Cryptic Out There. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of It's Cryptic Out There podcast. We're back. We're back. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. Yeah. It, it was It was a good, it was a really, really good Thanksgiving. It was. Yeah. I felt, you know, more focused. Yeah. More energized. Yeah. I spent a ton of time with family. We had family come in for a whole week. Mm -hmm. Spent a, a long time there. Yeah, I'd spend like 12 hours over in Giles just hanging out. I feel like I'm a thousand pounds right now after everything I've eaten. Yeah, on Thanksgiving I had one really big plate mm -hmm. and then I crushed it and I got to my second plate, right? <clears throat> so <clears throat> I eat 95% of this plate. Right. There's only a little bit of mashed potatoes and some roll left. <laughs> but that's really filling. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I, you could like. I was already mashed potato right. at this point. <laughs> but I knew I had a little bit of room left. Yeah. And I had to make a decision. Did I want to eat the last 5% of this plate? Or did I want a piece of my mom's pumpkin bread? Mm. And so, I didn't finish my second plate. I tried. I tried. I was just kind of forcing myself until I tapped out. But I got my piece of pumpkin bread. I think it's acceptable. I think that's yeah. acceptable, yeah. Because I wasn't, I was just replacing that. Right. You know, and it was a great decision. <laughs> Trying to store everything in your system, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a really good time. I enjoyed it. How about yeah. you? What about you? Well, I guess the highlight. <coughs> I went to Julia's mom's for Thanksgiving, and uh, they had two turkeys. Oh my gosh. Two full turkeys. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. One like cooked in the oven and the other one in the uh, deep fryer or whatever. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, siren's going off. Oh wow. It's cryptic yeah. out there. Everybody. That is. So I just was like, okay, I'll have like three slices of each or both of them. Yeah. So that nobody's like, because uh, Julia's mom's boyfriend deep fried the oh, turkey while yeah. she cooked it in the oven mm -hmm. so i i was like i'll be fair and you know i won't judge it but i'll be fair i eat both <laughs> yeah yeah 
Yes. My mom, we have, we always have a turkey and a ham. Yeah. And ours is a, uh, the ham is pineapple and brown sugar and, mm. oh, it's so good. Dude. Yeah. And I will like, maybe I'll divide some people, but I, I would take that ham over turkey any day. I, I don't think you're that controversial though. You don't think so? No, I think a lot of people nowadays are like, screw ham, or screw turkey. Yeah. Like, give yeah. me ham. But the turkey that we made, man... I have to maybe get my mom to send a picture. Yeah, you have to cook it. Yeah. Just this, to... the turkey that she made, or it was actually, dude, it was like a whole thing. <laughs> like, the night before, I was over there, mm-hmm. and they were like, can you go to Nero's in the morning, pick up the turkey from your sisters, and bring it up here, but we have to get it in the oven by 10 o'clock. <laughs> And it was this whole, like, coordination Mission. to get this turkey. Yeah, to get the turkey to my the God. oven up at my grandmother's. Jeez. Yeah. What a what a mission that was. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> but, hey, I mean, that turkey was beautiful. I yeah. still have a leg set in my house. It was good, too. I smothered it in gravy. and. Yeah, I think we still have leftovers. What's and... the best part of Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving or the leftovers? That's, that's what mm. I think. I don't know. I like the lead up to... The first time you eat everything. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Everybody, if you hear Mavis, we're we're like testing out if she'll be okay out of the cage while we record the episode. Trying to give her a little space. Yeah. You know, let her be her own thing. She's over here chilling on a little bed, chewing on her toy. And yeah. Ripping it apart. Yeah. Like a... Like a good dog. Yeah. Like a good dog would do. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah. So, what uh, what else were we talking about? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like I was talking about earlier, I felt more energized and more focused. And really, I think that's because of Magic Mind. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 What do you... Like, explain why you think you, you're feeling... So, obviously, before I started doing all of this, yeah. you know, like, I'd never done it before. So, I was never someone who would pick up something and try it and be like, oh, you know, this has worked. I've never tried, like, I'm not big, I'm coffee. Yeah. You know, I may have only drank coffee once or twice, mm. and it hasn't even been a full coffee. Right. It's been, like, a sip. Have you ever been, like, a supplement guy? No. Yeah. No, no. I've always just kind of, like I said, I just woke up and taken on the day. Right. But, uh, since trying this, yeah, I can definitely tell a difference in myself, you know. Right. Uh, we've been doing it for a while now. Yeah, several, um, several days. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, have really been able to see the effects, and it is nice. I knew going yeah. into Thanksgiving, I was able to sit there and talk to my uncle, and right. I spent a lot of time uh, talking to him. And I was focused the entire time. You know, you think when you eat all that food mm-hmm. and everything that you're feeling, oh, man, it's, sometimes it's hard to focus. Right. He actually passed out. I saw him. <laughs> I looked over, and he was slumped over on the couch, which... You're standing I strong. Yeah, I was standing there. I was standing strong. Uh, was able to get home safely and everything. Right. You know? So it was a good. It's it's good. You know, like we've talked about. Uh, it's a a good mediator between either doing nothing or too much. You yeah. Know, it's that nice middle ground. Right. Um. Also, I've. It seems like I'm better at like having conversations with people yeah. or like staying tuned in to the conversation. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a lot of new tropics like that are supposed to help with focus. Obviously yeah. what we've talked about. I know that, uh, you have taken ashwagandha yeah. like outside of this, yeah. but that's actually one of the ingredients in, um, magic mind. Yeah. You know, it's to reduce stress and anxiety, which if you think about it, when you reduce your stress, anxiety, you know, mm-hmm. those sort of things, you are able to focus better. Right, You right. know, once you get rid of those stressors. Yeah. And being, you know, having bad anxiety, <laughs> I get stressed out a lot, especially, you know, having a very busy schedule. I, I'm i glad that I have something that kind of like eases that and keeps me focused on my tasks so that I can, you know, complete them. Like we said, convenience. Yeah. You know, convenience. And it's so convenient. You can yeah. stick it in your pocket. Yeah. Drink it whenever you want. Take it whenever you want. Yeah. You know, you work night shift, you need that boost before you go to work at exactly. night. Exactly. You know, that's what I'm thinking yeah. about, you know. During this week, it was, I would have been sleeping in, but sometimes when I sleep in, I'm feeling groggy. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I slept too much. Mm-hmm. Wake up, you know, do my daily routine, take a shot of those, 
good to go. Right. So I think this is actually working pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, for everyone who listens, all of our listeners who, we love you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. You guys have done so good for us over mm-hmm. the past month. Like, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, but we have, uh, you can go to www.magicmind.co slash cryptic. That's HTTPS uh, semicolon slash slash www.magicmind.co slash C-R-Y-P-T-I-C. And you can get 40% off your subscription for the next 10 days with our code cryptic20, C-R-Y-P-T-I-C-2-0. That's pretty gnarly. Yeah. 40% off? Yeah. You can, I got a little... I was frustrated. I was trying to talk and <laughs> yeah. spell that out, and I was going tongue-tied. Right. Ugh. But, yeah, we uh, really appreciate everybody at Magic Mind. And we wouldn't promote this if we didn't believe in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We definitely think, you know, the modern edge, the way things are going. That yeah. We're very happy to be working with Magic Mind yeah. on this. If you want a health kick, if you want to kick out all the... Uh, you know, bad stuff that you put in your system for, you know, that extra edge, I highly suggest, we highly suggest that you purchase Magic Mind, get the 40% off discount, and try it out. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. It's a good deal, Yeah, you know. If you're looking for a, you know, maybe you got a family member who's on a health kick. Yeah. And you're looking for a Christmas present. There you go. Hey. There you go. It's not a bad Christmas gift. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. There you great. go. There you go, everybody. Yes. Uh, thanks again to Magic Mind. Yeah, thank and... you again for the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, we we really are finding the, the benefits of this. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Speaking of opportunity, uh, we had an, I had an experience. Okay. That yes. I can't share on the podcast, <laughs> right? What we did. Um, hmm. Try and do it in a way where it's not giving away anything. If that's possible. I saw something. Yeah. While filming. The documentary. The documentary. Yes, I saw something. First time I'd ever seen anything. Ever in my life. And it was so sudden. Mm -hmm. It was so, so quick and shocking. Yeah. I'm sure I haven't... I need to go back and watch mm-hmm. what, like, I want to see the whole thing because the pure shock and awe and amazement mm-hmm. that I experienced in that moment, like, I've thought about it every day since it's, it's happened. changed you, right? It has, man. Yeah. It seriously changed me. <laughs> and it would change anybody else, too. I wasn't skeptical. I opened myself up because I want to see more. Yeah. Even I want for to the skeptics, too. maybe it would help. Yeah. But also. It, you should open up to it. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I wasn't looking, guys, if I can Mm-mm. ever say anything. We were in a house in Ripple Mead, Virginia. We weren't looking for anything. We didn't expect anything. We were just there to talk about stuff. Yeah. We weren't even trying to interact with anything. No. And we did. Yeah. We did. Randomly. Randomly. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh... Lit. <laughs> Cryptic. <laughs> Bone chilling. Yeah. <laughs> So stay tuned for that. Yeah, we love you, Andy. Yes. Just just throw it out there. <laughs> You're great. You're great. It's definitely going to be an interesting project. Yeah, we think uh, you guys are really going to enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's in the you know distant future. The future. Uh, but I mean, come on. When you have something like that, you gotta. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, I've been freaking out, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, for someone that has been kind of wanting to experience something or like just get a feel for some of something. I'm glad you experienced well, that. Well, one of the things I'm happy about is that I didn't go anywhere that is economic haunted. Yeah. yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Where there's someone making profit off the fact that this could be haunted. Right. Whereas we just went somewhere and it just happened. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, maybe this is... <laughs> she might be scared of this conversation. Yeah, she's not having it. Maybe she's letting me know I'm talking too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving too much. All right, Mavis, I, I understand. I got you. We'll change the subject now. <laughs> well, for the viewers, um, 
a blizzard came through apparently yeah yeah <laughs> thanksgiving ended and christmas, christmas was you know jingling all the way here the lights are already set up for some reason um don't know why but uh well i guess for christmas obviously yeah. but i don't know who did it but who knows santa maybe <laughs> if i'm pumped if maybe. cryptic santa shows up that might be something with his bag full of that could be pretty messed Creepy. up. <laughs> Dead animals. Oh my god. <laughs> I guess. I just thought creepy stuff, you know? Right. He goes around and just gives out Eyeballs. like, here's Ed Gaines glasses. <laughs> oh, oh, you oh. want the tie that Ted Bundy wore to... It's been a long day, everybody. I've had a really, I've had a really long day. I've been in Tennessee yeah. and pick up a vehicle. I was up really early. And then I, yeah, it's, it's been a whole thing. I am. That's hilarious. Yeah. And then we I, we got here, yeah. And I watched that video, yeah, that I had never seen before. Yeah, I didn't even know that existed. Really? Yeah, I had oh, no okay. idea. I only saw the. Well, I guess you just want to go ahead and open it up, and then we'll. Yeah, what he's talking about is the WDBJ seven, which is located in Roanoke, Virginia. The tragic day of when Allison and Adam were murdered by a former employee that was, you know, recorded on video. And that was the first time Josh ever seen it. And it occurred in 2015. And I'm, I am surprised that uh, you never, you didn't know that there was a video of it. Yeah, no, I, um, I honestly just had thought that it had happened. I didn't know that he recorded it. You know, I think, did he mail, like, his manifesto or something? I think they found... I mean, we'll get into it. We will, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, like... And... I don't know how many of you guys out there see videos of people dying. Yeah. I hate it because I know I'm desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. I saw a video... Of a Russian soldier laying in a trench, his leg completely blown off and to the side. God. And he's alive, staring up at a drone that's capturing the footage of this. And he takes his rifle and sticks up to his chest and shoots himself and kills himself. Oh my god. And then the drone dropped two grenades on top of him. Oh my Yeah. God. Now it's terrible. Like, no one should watch that. And I shouldn't watch that, right? right? But the really unfortunate side of and that's you know war and everything but like that is the reality mm -hmm. of this world yeah. you know we talk about the true crime and the paranormal but you know the disturbing yeah and the awful and when you see that stuff like it's awful yeah like it's one thing hearing the story from us yeah but then actually getting to see... Like, we're telling you these stories because we've seen these videos. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. There was a video I saw of recently. Um, it was on Reddit, which maybe no one should get Reddit, honestly. <laughs> right. Reddit's one of those weird places. It but is weird. It was just a, like a 4K footage of JFK's assassination. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. I remember as, uh, you know, going through high school... There's a video that came out, and people sent, were sending links to it. And I don't know, I don't know if someone sent me the link. I don't think I went to looking for it or whatever. But it's the video of like the cartel capturing two guys, and they're on their knees, and then a cartel takes a chainsaw oh, and cuts his head off. Yeah, Oof. and then the other one gets his slit throat, yeah. his neck slit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a traumatizing video. Well, that's what's crazy, man. Like, and I'm sure our parents who listen to this are like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what are my poor babies, yeah. you know? But, like, there's nothing you could have done about it no. because that was the very early days of having a cell phone. Yes. And social media. Bestcore.com, that thing's yeah, what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that shit is wild. I mean, there was a picture I saw of Jack the Ripper's last victim. Mm. in 1888 and like that stuff is crazy i would love to do a jack the ripper episode maybe we should we should we should yeah. 
travel all the way over to London. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fish and chips. Do our best. Oh, God. That was, that was pretty bad. bad. Yeah, that, was, that was bad. That was pretty bad. Julie could do a great one. Per- I think mine was Australian, actually. It might have been. It was. <laughs> British. I don't know what mine was. Yeah. Schoolgirl. British schoolgirl. Hip, hip, de doodly do. <laughs> God, Jesus. All right. <sighs> Sorry to all the British listeners out there. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of fools. Right. Hey, I have Doc Martens. They're British. Oh. I don't even know what those are. Boots. Oh, okay. Those new boots that Julia got. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're British, yeah. I guess. Yeah. From London, whatever. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. That's cool. Anyway. Happy early Christmas. Yeah. That was my birthday. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. Thanks. <laughs> I'm in the 27 Club. Nice. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, maybe you can actually reach out. You can try and do like a seance to bring up Kurt Cobain or something. Wow. I fun. think Heath Ledger died at 27, too. Hmm. I feel like he would have been older than that, maybe. Maybe. He was super young. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> anyway. I'm getting back to you on that. Yeah. But before we dive into this crazy episode, we hope that you like the show. And if you do, please support support us by liking, subscribing on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen or watch the show. Um Five stars would help, you know, immensely, yeah. immensely by bringing us up through the algorithm to be shown more to audiences and just help the show grow uh, in general. So if you could do that, that would be great, and uh, we would uh, love you forever, and you'd be part of the uh, cryptic cult. <laughs> yeah, Justin's lying to you though. We already love you forever. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> just, Whether you're just a casual listener, just yeah, thanks for doing just, that. Yeah, seriously, thanks so much. The last episode got like a thousand views. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the most viewed yeah. episode. Know, yeah, Thanks. <laughs> pretty much. We appreciate that, over a y'all. thousand. Yeah, y'all are so great to it. So we're good, right. us. We're so right. good. Right. Us. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Okay, well, Josh, are you ready for this wild episode? Oh, I'm not, but I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it is the WDBJ seven shooting. That is probably my favorite local news outlet when I would watch cable or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But their, you know, Facebook account, Twitter account is yeah. pretty fire, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's just, you know, start with the story. On the morning of August 26, 2015, reporter Allison Parker, age 24, and photojournalist Adam Ward, age 27, from CBS affiliate WDBJ7, Roanoke, Virginia News, set off to travel to Monita near Smith Mountain Lake. They were at the Bridgewater Plaza interviewing executive director of local Chamber of Commerce, Vicki Gardner, and a live broadcast when the tragic, nightmarish event took place. The interview was about the 50th anniversary of Smith Mountain Lake a Basin inserted among farms and continuing mountains for people such as kayakers, sunbathers, and anglers. The nightmare took place at 6.45 a.m. when gunshots opened fire, revealing Allison and Vicky reacting in terror, with Allison running away from the scene and the camera abruptly dropping to the ground with only hearing screams and a frightening eight gunshots. However, there was a glimpse of the gunman. The broadcast quickly went back to the WDBJ-7 headquarters with anchor Kimberly McBroom still in shock and fear. As she tries to compose herself and change subjects on the matter about with saying, quote, okay, not sure what happened there. We will let you know as soon as we find out. They would soon find out that Allison and Adam would be dead on the scene, with Vicki Garner shot and injured. It would leave many as to why this happened, who committed these murders, and what was going to happen next. The gunman would soon be revealed as former WDBJ-7 employee Vester Lee Flanagan II, or professionally known as Bryce Williams. 
Before we discuss the reasoning of this act of violence, I think we should discuss the bizarre, disturbing history of Flanagan, which goes back several years. Flanagan was born on October 8, 1973, and was a native of Oakland, California. Graduating from Skyline High School, and then later earning a degree in radio slash television at San Francisco State University in 1995, he would begin working in production and news writing. On the side, he would work part-time as an actor and model before his professional career in journalism, which to me, that was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting set of career choices. Th- it was random. Yeah. It yeah. was random. Actor, model, news reporter. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Uh, he started out in Savannah, Georgia at CBS affiliate WTOC TV in 1997 to 1999. He would then go on to work in Florida with WTBWC TV, which is where his bizarre behavior became noticeable. At least as far as we know. Yeah. Fl- Flanagan was an openly gay black man. He accused co-workers were saying offensive remarks about his sexual preferences to news director Don Schaefer. It is documented that Flanagan verbally abused two female workers at the station on multiple occasions, and several photographers attempted to get out of working with Flanagan due to his, quote, diva behavior. (laughs) So he's just... You know, pre-cancel culture, I guess. Pre-cancel. <laughs> Seems like a uh, uh, a I mean. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. No, no. I think that was the best way. Yeah. I was gonna try and say it, that, but not as direct. Or... Yeah. Not as good as you said. <laughs> okay, that's for sure. <laughs> Flanagan would get canned for his behavior in March 2000. Flanagan even filed a lawsuit against the station for racial discrimination, which was later settled in 2001. Flanagan would travel across states working in similar similar fields of work, including North Carolina and Texas. He, I mean, he's traveled all over the yeah, nation. Yeah, for real. Flanagan would then be hired on October 19, 2012, at WDBJ7 as a multimedia journalist under the professional name Bryce Williams. I'm kind of unsure why he changed his name at first. At first I was like, why does he have two names? But with all this crazy past, I think he, you know, doesn't want to come off to like new... Well, it's almost like a stage name too. You know, That's true. Rather than be who you are, like who you really are, Bryce yeah. Williams. You yeah. Know? Maybe. Which it, wasn't there already a Bryce Williams news anchor? I'm not sure. For like NBC or something. I don't think so. No. Nah. Brian think, Williams. Brian, Brian Williams. Williams. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. that. It's close enough. You think about it. Maybe. I mean, we just made the connection. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I thought it could be because of his reputation. No, but, I mean, I think yeah. that makes sense, too. I just wonder if at those places he worked at, yeah. he went under... I mean, because to work there, you'd have to give your real name. Right. Well, according yeah. to what I, all I read was that name didn't appear until he started WGPJ7, but I don't know. I mean, he could have just used it as a... Because probably because of his reputation, yeah. he could be on the TV and someone from one of those news stations could call and be mm-hmm. like... You my guys might want to get right. rid of this guy or something like that. Yeah. So, well, there is a later on in the episode, um, you'll hear the reason why I think it was because of his reputation. Yeah, but we'll get to that. They thought Flanagan was a an experienced journalist and would be highly fit for the team. Which I mean, I mean, he's got some solid, you know. I mean, credentials, yeah. right? However, there were conflicts with other employees, of course. They were, quote, were feeling threatened or uncomfortable when working with him. They would fire Flanagan on February 1st, 2013 due to uh, volatile behavior. Mm. 
Flanagan apparently lashed out at the staffer, causing police to escort him off the premises. Adam Ward allegedly recorded him as he was escorted out of the building, and the two men who had confrontations with him earlier that day, Flanagan threw a wooden cross at one, saying, quote, you need this. Where did he get a wooden cross? Because they just had it up. Maybe he was planning up. for it. <laughs> He yeah. acted it out. He had I'm all throw this at him. Yeah. Or he just, you know. Yeah. He's an actor. Yeah, yeah. Like, let, break that down. I mean, that's somebody like, you know, who... Let's set up a uh, scene. Yeah, yeah, like, has worked it all out to go in the way that he wants to. Yeah. You know, he's controlling it. Yeah. You know? And the vanity that he probably takes in that. Like, mm-hmm. the, just the uh, the attention. Yeah. You know, that, that could be what it is. Relishes in it. Yeah. 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 All right. WDBJ even provided security to the employees after the incident. Flanagan filed a complaint for racial discrimination once again, but was dismissed, but the, was dismissed the complaint as uncooperative, uncooperated. Flanagan would find a job at a local United Health Group after the dismissal of WDBJ7. There, things escalated with Flanagan arguing with a female employee who pointed out his weird behavior. Obviously, obviously it's you, dude. Yeah, like there's a pattern. <laughs> there is literally a pattern. A pattern. He Which, had to know that. It also makes you wonder why WDBJ7 would have hired him. Because up till he even got there, there's such a list. Well, of, you remember when I said the reason why that people might not know about his reputation? We'll get to it. Gotcha. Yeah. It is also reported that his odd behavior occurred where he lived. Here we go. One of his neighbors at his apartment complex said he was an arrogant person who acted rude towards everyone and even threw cat feces at the residents' homes. Now, with all of this background information, we now know that Flanagan's a terrible, disturbed human being. Yeah, yeah. So this leads us to the motive of the shooting. Flanagan was quite active on Facebook and Twitter. He would repeat the claims of racial discrimination by WDBJ on both accounts. He claimed that Allison Parker made a racist remark during an internship at the station pertaining to a friend of Flanagan's and that Adam Ward had filed a complaint against him to HR after working with him. It was approximately 11.14 a.m. on the day of the shooting where Flanagan uploaded a 56-second video of his phone to Twitter as well as Facebook. He wrote on Twitter, I filmed the shooting, see on Facebook. The video was POV perspective of Flanagan walking to the scene of the interview with Allison Adam and Vicki Gardner. It is shown Flanagan pointing a handgun for nearly 15 seconds at Allison while behind Adam, who was filming the interview. You would hear Flanagan whisper, bitch, while pointing the gun at Allison. He would lower it but raise it again to fire shots directly at her. Allison would flinch, scream, and dart away for her escape. This is where Adam's camera would drop, revealing a glimpse of Flanagan pointing the gun. For viewers and listeners, we're going to show you, you know, a clip of the incident. If you wish to watch or listen, just, I mean, if you don't wish to watch or listen, please skip ahead. Yeah. Because it yeah. is pretty gnarly. Maybe we could put a timestamp. Yeah, maybe In, so. like, the bio. Yeah, in the bio, we could yeah, put a timestamp. we'll put a trigger warning. And yeah. Then, uh, so, pause this, scroll down. Yeah, and you read. will have to listen or yeah. watch. Yeah. yeah, but... Because it's fucked up. Yeah, it is, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's awful, man. Like, you just watched it earlier. Yeah. The first time. And I actually watched it again, mm. uh, just because as you were talking, I was, you know, thinking about it. Yeah. And he shot her, like... Well, I guess... I mean, I don't know how many times... It looked yeah. like there were... I don't know how many times she was shot. Yeah. And I was also looking up on Wikipedia. I don't know if we're going to get into, like, their injuries and everything. Right, right. But... Uh, yeah, it looked like he just pointed and shot it like, sounded like five times at yeah. her. Not that, all of them had to hit her, but... Right. I mean, it was a total of eight shots, so... I mean, I don't know. I, I think the video might have captured eight, 
it's hard to tell how many he actually fired. Uh, yeah. I mean, it says that, uh, Parker died from gunshot wounds to her head and chest. Yeah. While Ward died from shots to his head and torso. Yeah, yeah. And Gardner was shot in the back after she curled into a fetal position in an attempt to play dead. A total of 15 shots were fired. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna let you listen and watch the clip. If you want to skip ahead, do so right now. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Gnarly. 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 Awful. Yeah. The implications of that. I know we've talked about a lot how a shooting impacts more than just, you know, the victims. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes so deep and it ripples and ripples. And even in this, you know, like, if you're from the area, you know that Roanoke has a ton of gun violence. You know, there's a lot of a lot of shootings and murders that happen up in Roanoke. Um, and then for this, you know, this is a thought-out murder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is yeah, a... Definitely. Thought-out murder. And when I go into the details, it's, it's very thought-out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Later reports would come out that Flanagan fled the scene and would be in a high-speed chase with the police before he would attempt to take his own life. In a New York Times article, it is quoted... I'll read this. Uh, New York Times. Almost two hours after the shootings, a 23-page missive faxed to ABC News headquarters in New York, apparently from Mr. Flanagan, pointed to the June 17th shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, in which a white supremacist is accused of killing nine people in a Bible study group. ABC reported that a man claiming to be Bryce Williams had contacted the network several times in recent weeks, saying he had a story for them. He never said what it was. Quote, Why did I do it? Mr. Flanagan said in a rambling fax message, which the New York Times obtained from a law enforcement official. I already, I'm already on edge. Or, no, sorry. I was already on edge. The church shooting was a tipping point. The victim's initials are written on the bullets. God. He echoed the words of the accused Charleston gunman, Dylan Roof. Yeah. And spoke of a race war. He also said Jehovah had told him to act. He spoke admirably of the Columbine High School killers and the gunman who carried out the Virginia Tech massacre that left 32 people dead. At one point, he called his document a suicide note for friends and family. Wow. The facts, which also contain allegations that he was repeatedly harassed, bullied, and discriminated against for being black and gay, was turned over to law enforcement officials. On Twitter, he made similar charges of racism and harassment, adding that he had filed a complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, a federal agency. A spokeswoman for the agency, Kimberly Smith Brown, said federal law prohibited her from confirming whether the agency had received a complaint. Quote, the gentleman was disturbed at the way things had turned out. At some point in his life, Sheriff Overtone said in the news conference, quote, things were spiraling out of control. Accounts from former colleagues, competitors, and court records indicated that Mr. Flanagan, who had graduated from San Francisco State University and working in several markets around the South, was a skilled broadcaster, but also volatile, combative, threatening, and prone to seeing himself as persecuted. Um, help me, please. <laughs> Fucking bitch. <laughs> Damn, yeah. Justin's a, this is an aggressive Justin <laughs> yeah, we're having sorry. today. Jeez. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I could just, I, you've been researching this, and yeah. you've just been I'm like, I'm, Yeah, I'm just typing. I'm like, God, this guy was terrible. I want to let this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a video compilation of Mr. Flanagan's reporting of the kind of reporters often make to show prospective employee, employers begins chilling 
and him holding a gun. Oh. But at WDBJ, he typically did human interest stories, a town with seven churches within a three-block area, firefighters handing out free smoke detectors, hunt fests, and animal hunting products event at the Roanoke Civic Center, a local man turning 100. You know, this is yeah. just examples yeah. of what he could do. <clears throat> but here's a clip of uh, his resume, which is kind of kind of disturbing because he is holding guns a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll play that right now. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> Continuing with the New York Times article, it is quoted, After the shooting on Wednesday, Mr. Flanagan left the scene in a rented car. His own car was parked at the Roanoke Airport, Sheriff Overtone said. You know, he's thinking this through. He's thinking hard about yeah. it. Yeah. Officials said the police pursued him going north on Interstate 81, but did not attempt to catch him, knowing that he was armed. It is not clear whether they lost track of him after he turned east on Interstate 66, heading towards Washington. A state trooper spotted the car using a license plate reader. And after being joined by other units, the troopers turned on their lights and tried to pull him over around 11:30 a.m. Because he rented a car. Yeah. He ditched his Ford Mustang and yeah. rented a car, and that's how they picked up on it. Because I guess they went to that place and. Yeah found that because the search lasted from like then the murder happened at like 6 45 yeah and then he killed himself by eleven thirty. right yeah he refused to stop and speed away said sergeant rick garlitz of the state police a minute or two later the vehicle ran off the road and into the median mr flaney was found with a gunshot wound to the head and was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead two hours later so he suffered a little bit. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. At the stunned television station, co-workers mourned their slain colleagues. Mr. Ward was engaged to Melissa Oat. O-T-T. Is that how you say Oat? I suppose. A producer at WDBJ. Okay, so they worked together. Yeah. His Facebook page shows pictures of the two of them on vacation in Las Vegas and most recently this summer, Atlantic City. Members of the station said, uh, station staff said Mrs. O was at the station watching the broadcast. Oh my gosh, she was watching when it happened. They said it was to be her last day at the station before she moved to Charlotte, North Carolina for another job. And that was Mr. Ward's job, is, you know, his plan as well, is to find work down there. <clears throat> Damn. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Devastating. So in his part of his suicide note, Flanken said, yeah, I'm all fucked up in the head. So he's aware of the type of person he is. He's got issues and he knows he's got issues. Yeah. After Flanagan's death, officers searched his rental car. They found various items, including a Glock pistol with several magazines and ammunition, a cell phone, letters, notes, a to-do list, Hmm. a suitcase containing three license plates, and several disguises, including a wig. Wow. So, yeah, going back, he did think this through. Yeah, he had his own plan. Yep. Probably for everything. He probably looked at everything, even the wig, and was like, all right, worst case scenario, put on the wig. Right. Go in here and do this or something. Yeah. You know, because in that case, he's on the run. He could have walked in anywhere, killed anybody, done mm-hmm. anything. You know, absolutely. In 2019, Vicky Vicky Gardner filed a six million civil suit against WDBJ for being neg- negligent in hiring Vester Lee Flanagan II, who wounded her and killed journalists Alice Parker and Adam Ward, then himself on June 26. 2020, a Franklin County Circuit Court dismissed the case. It is terrible that Vicky, you know, was involved with all this. Yeah. However, who would have thought that Flanagan would have done this? 
I don't know. Maybe if you would have looked into his entire past of That's being true. a terrible That's fucking true. person. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he had to have he had to have applied. Yeah, and unless that he was just like, I'm new to this and I just want to do this, but you would think he'd put references on. And did they not call and vet, right? And ask about Lester? Did is that not what happened? Well, according to an interview with Dan Dennison, who is the head of WDBJ, commented on how modern society, human resources, can allow the work field to really go into someone's personal past until they're going to offer it. Unless they're going to offer it. But they did offer it. He got the job. Yeah. So, like, what's the excuse past that? Unless he's trying to talk, like, so, like, tell me about your, you know, recent work or whatever. Like, how'd that go? Why don't, why don't you work there anymore? Yeah, but you would think that if he puts in his resume that, hey, I've worked yeah. at these places, you know. That's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah that's... It. I mean, I could also see where, like, I don't know. It just seems like you would see that. Yeah. Unless being a news anchor isn't as hard as I thought it would be. I guess not. You know, and I'm sorry to any news anchors out there that I'm right. just disrespected by saying that, but <laughs> this guy was able to be a shitty news anchor at like three other two other news stations. Probably more than that, maybe. Yeah, yeah. like doing all this other yep. crap mm-hmm. and everyone didn't want to work with him and everybody had complained and done all this and then he gets to WDBJ7 and... Well, he mentioned like Monterson Sire don't look into stuff. There's plenty of people that are bosses that look on their employees' social medias. Dude, has he heard of the Patriot Act? Right. That's literally, <laughs> if you tweet about blowing something up or something, mm-hmm. that gives the government a right to go into your messages right, and start scattering around yeah. looking. I could see where, I could see that happening where they didn't go into it. Yeah. And... I mean, that's the negligence that I would say. Yeah. When she's saying that, like, the negligence is not that they kept her safe or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. that they didn't seriously vet the candidate when they hired him. Right. Plus, he was already fired. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for her to do that, I mean, it's kind of like... (laughs) Uh, Now, that, he didn't work there anymore. That was... This is just premeditated murder. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, But... Because he got fired in 2013, and the murders happened two years later. Yeah. So I mean, in all reality, yeah. I can why see. would you, you know, I, try I, to? I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. And that sucks for her because she just catch caught the brunt of it. Yeah. You yeah. know. Right. Following the murders, Patrick Henry Community College and the PHCC Foundation created the Allison Bailey Parker Memorial Scholarship to remember Parker, who graduated from the college in 2009. The scholarship is awarded annually to a student study studying in media design and production program. In 2017, JMU dedicated a soundstage and control room in Harrison Hall to Parker, naming it the Allison B. Parker Studio. JMU's Media Arts and Design School also established the Allison B. Parker Memorial Fund in her honor. That's pretty deep. Yeah. The Salem Educational Foundation of Alumni Association established the Adam Ward Scholarship Fund to remember Ward. He had previously attended Salem High School, where his father, Buddy, had also worked as a guidance counselor. So I have their obituaries. I would, I just wanted to uh, go in depth about them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Allison Parker's, loved by everyone who knew her, was taken from us at the age of 2000, or 24 on August 26, 2015, born in uh, Annapolis. Annapolis. And, and, yeah, Annapolis. Uh, Allison grew up in Collinsville, Virginia, and graduated from Martinsville High School in 2009. Her many accomplishments included Piedmont District Swimmer of the Year Award, Big M Trophy recipient, and a member of the jazz and concert bands where she played both trumpet and French horn. As a student at the Piedmont Governor's School for Math, Science, and Technology, she was a member 
of the award-winning robotics team. Wow. Allison was a gymnast, a beautiful dancer, and when kayaking with her family, she grew to love the beauty of the rivers around us. Fuck you, Vester. Right? Yeah. Like, she was such a gal. <laughs> yeah, that that is... Yeah. That is awful. And you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, 2015, mm-hmm. that would have been a, We would have graduated. That would have been our first year out of high school, yep. right? We're two years, three years older than she was mm-hmm. when she passed away, right. you know? I was working at Food Line when this happened. I was like, working uh, at Tech. Yeah. She was accepted into the James Madison University School of Media Arts and Design and was a news editor at The Breeze, a member of Alpha Alpha Phi Sorority, and was a tutor of freshman calculus students. During her college summers, (laughs) she was a New College Institute intern for the United Way of MURA in Martinsville and at WDBJ7 in Roanoke, Virginia. She graduated from JMU in 2012 and joined the news team at WCT... Uh, I-12 in North Carolina as the Jacksonville Borough Chief covering camp... uh, some type of camp, and then uh, the surrounding area where she relished the tough schedule and hard news. Allison was recruited to return to WDBJ7 in Roanoke as the morning reporter last year, and she greeted viewers each weekday morning with a smile and her bubbly personality, hoping to make their day a little brighter. If you want to read like the rest of it, I'll have the link in the description. Um, but also... Uh, it talks about where she was in love with Chris Hurst. Um, say what you want about Chris Hurst, but he was involved. Former delegate. Yeah. Um, he was, you know, I think going to marry her. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were engaged. They were definitely together. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's other links of, uh, um, like the scholarships and everything. Yeah. Uh, so let me go and look at Adams. <laughs> All right. Adams was born on May 10th, 1988 to Charles Buddy and Mary Lou Spees Ward of Daleville, Virginia. Although he grew up in a body tort with his grew up in Botator with his sister and brother, Sarah and Jay. He was truly a Salem Spartan, born and bred. From childhood, he loved Salem sports, especially football, and joined his father. And joined his father, a guidance counselor at Salem High School, as a seventh grader in the school system. After high school, he fulfilled another dream by becoming a proud member of the Hokie Nation. Adam was the one with the painted chest in 20 degree weather screaming the loudest from the end zone. While at Tech, he discovered a passion for journalism and interned on the Greg Roberts radio show and at WDBJ7, which eventually led to a full-time role post-graduation. It was there that he met his fiance and the love is love is life Melissa Ott of Gibbstown, New Jersey. They were together for a little over two years and were planning to get married in July 2016. Adam was known throughout the Roanoke Valley as a loyal and giving friend, a champion for the underdog, and someone who lived every day to the fullest. Everyone who met him instantly loved him. We'll always remember his smile and laughter. He is preceded in death by his beloved grandparents, who we know are spoiling him rotten right now. He is survived by his loving father and mother, Buddy and Mary Ward, sister and brother-in-law, Sarah and Dave Crowder, brother, Jay Ward, fiance, Melissa Ott, and niece, Olivia, or, quote, tater tot, as her uncle, Adam, affectionately called her. He is also survived by numerous uncles and aunts, cousins, and a host of friends he considered family. Wow. 
that. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Heart wrenching. You know, it's terrible. It Two is. lights. You know, taken out. Two great people. Like, yeah. it's hard to find those type of people. I wonder how he even knew that they were there. That's interesting. You know, I don't know. Like, how did he even get the information? They're at Smith Mountain Lake at 6.45 in the morning. Yeah. How does he know that they're there? That's a good uh, question. That's a very good question. I didn't even think of that. Because it doesn't make any sense. No, it don't. Like, who who would have told him? Who would have known? Yeah. He didn't work. He had, he had been fired there for two years. Yeah. Does he have a friend on the side who he just asked, hey, what are they doing? I don't know. Yeah. And it makes me wonder how he, like, that. that's a lot to plan. Mm-hmm. Everything that he went through. Like, there's no way he could have done that. Right. I wonder if it is known that Adam and Allison worked together for about everything, you know? So he knew that they were going to be together that day. Yeah. I just, that's so weird. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. I'm trying to see if I can find something. Yeah. Well, if anybody knows, if we don't find it, please yeah, call the yeah. hotline or text the hotline. Let us know. 540-358-1583. Because that, that's a very interesting um, mystery. Yeah, I don't think that's ever been answered. Because he had Maybe to not. have. It's not like he just showed up there. And, right. You know. he, I mean, he would have known. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody would have told him or, I don't know, stalking them. Uh, that's very possible. Yeah. That's very possible. Yeah. So, I didn't know that there were conspiracy theories behind oh, yeah. all this. Yeah. Until you, you know, mentioned it. Yeah. What are some of the conspiracies behind all Some of the stuff that I heard, and these are, like, kind of crazy. Yeah. You know? But there were some people who were, like, adamant that, like, she didn't die. And, like, it was blanks that were being shot. Mm. And no one died. And that it was, like uses a pawn or something mm. like it was a, a false flag operation yeah like a false shooting sort of thing uh yeah Jesus. Like they faked it like the moon landing right yeah or like alex jones thinking that sandy hook, sandy was, a hook was a yeah hoax all that stupid shit right that so when you told me that i, I tried looking i didn't hear about that one mm-hmm. uh i saw where uh well, maybe it is the same concept, but it was like a website of like debunking the 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 theories behind it. Where Chris Hurst texted or like tweeted out or posted something at a certain time that this event happened, and then another post that it, the time did, just didn't add up, and they were like, "Oh, they made a mistake. You know, this is fake." Yeah, but it was debunked. Well. As I continued reading, but also like he would know before anybody else. Probably, right? yeah. You know, Probably that's his. So. He worked there. Yeah. So I would think they'd make call him and be like, "Hey, you should show up." But like he does, just point the gun at her mm-hmm. and shoots like five times. That's enough to just kill her. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Pretty crazy. Awful, man. Yeah. Awful. Stop shooting people, man. <laughs> Stop. Just stop. Mental health, dude. Right. Like, Mental get your shit health. fixed. He knew something was wrong with him. Yeah, he knew. And he knew, and he did nothing to fix it, nope. man. Nothing. Nope. Figure your shit out. Very yeah. narcissistic, it's arrogant the, person. The accountability that people talk about when it comes to mental health. Yeah. Like, be accountable for your actions. Yeah. If you're not willing to fix yourself, yeah. then, you know, you can't blame everybody else for pushing you away or mm-hmm. something like that. Right. Yeah. You gotta be willing to put in the work. I didn't want to interrupt you, but while you were saying all that great stuff just now, Mavis farted, oh. and I tried to keep my composure. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, she's been such a good girl. Yeah. She's just laid there and slept the entire time. Yeah. Uh, when we cut to play a video, she woke up just for a quick second to <laughs> sneeze, Yeah. and then it was like her entire face just yeah. melted. Crumbled. <laughs> right back to sleep. She did good. Yeah. She did good proud of you you did good too josh thanks you did you did fantastic thanks and you know who else did perfect everybody who's listening or watching absolutely right now. 
if you made it this far thank y'all you're the real ones yeah for real we can't we we you know we would probably just do this if we were speaking out into a box you know probably so if we were the if we were just speaking to ourselves and in this room yeah you know because we love doing this man Mm -hmm. like that's what's fun about it it's a passion you know it is thanks thanks for everybody who reaches out absolutely ask this stuff you know like give us some suggestions yeah like we're we're trying to find like some some more gnarly stories uh some fun locations that we could possibly go to maybe jack the ripper jack the ripper would be fun too (laughs) you know that would be uh interesting one yeah i agree cover some stuff like that we'll plan that (laughs) i was gonna say like i don't think anybody would want to listen to us talk about ted bundy yeah, that's what I. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Like, it's just. I've always thought about it's that. overdone. Like those guys. Yeah. Like there's all there's so much stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's what I mentioned. Like the local stuff, or like small town, you know, cases. They're they're so crazy and. Yeah. And. All the elements to it is just so bizarre how things transpire. Yeah. And that's interesting to me. Uh, but like. The Dahmer, the the Bundys, uh, the Gacy's, it's everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's all over Netflix and everything and all yeah. that. And yeah. they've been pop popular. Mm-hmm. Heavy quotations for the listeners. Yeah. Popular. Uh, <coughs> yeah. For a long time now. Yes. Yeah, it's cool. This is a passion, like you said. Yeah, we. Love this. Yep. I feel defeated after listening to that. Man, it was it a rough. Sucks. It's so sad. Sucks, yeah. man. Like sucks. The last episode was sad. This one's sad too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's how it is. These things are sad just yeah. because you're losing such young people. But honestly, it's like well, Vester and even um, the guy before. Like, there's reasons why these guys do the things mm-hmm. that they do. You know. Yeah. And I like to uncover that and think about it. Yeah. Talk about it. I think that's what fascinates me the most as to why they would go to such a degree of yeah. committing and something. And another thing is, is like here, like a lot of this stuff, I don't know if people know, you yeah. know, like even if you went on Wikipedia or whatever, like this is like kind of letting people know the tales behind the legend. You yeah. Know, giving a more in-depth look. Right. I didn't know there was so much details into this yeah. story, too. Yeah, me either. You know, they just made it out to be that it was like a workplace incident, you know? Yeah. And then you get in here, this man has wigs and three different license plates. Well, and... his whole life, he struggled with keeping a job because of his personality. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's deep. It's cryptic out there. It's cryptic Gotta out there. Gotta watch your back. Yeah. And that should go to show, like... You know, I talk to some of uh, some uh, my friends, and I'm like, "Yo, like, if somebody's out here road raging. Like, sure, I messed up. Don't mm-hmm. shoot me in the face. Right, right. You know, don't like, be a I'm bitch. Wrong, you know, <laughs> don't be like, a puss. Yeah, bitch. for real. Like, it. Like, if somebody's gonna come up to me and scream at me because I drove wrong or something, mm-hmm. like, man, I don't want to die. Right. You Let's know? throw hands. Yeah. Well, not even <laughs> not that. even that. But I mean, like, go rather than <laughs> I'm wrong. Go on about your business. Yeah. Like, if you're that weak, and, like, you were that weak oh, minded, yeah. and you have to win a road rage car. Right. Like, sure. Right. Go ahead. You won. Yep. You're better than me. You know? I'll just drive off. And I be like, well, what a fucking pussy. <laughs> Bitch. You know? Yeah, for real. <laughs> We've been really aggressive this episode. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. I hate these people. <laughs> I t- yeah, yeah. They're the worst. I try to, I try, man, to sit there and not defend, but think about it as like what he possibly could have went through i mean there's a lot of factors that we don't know we don't know what it was like for him growing up yeah we don't know his history right. you know what the events that could have made him so like there's a lot of people who become actors or models or mm-hmm. whatever because they like the vanity they like to be the center of attention it's not about the acting yeah it's not about the performance they don't like the art of that they don't like the art of modeling they like everything that surrounds that the attention mm-hmm. you know and but I, the fact that we do know that he knew that he was messed up and oh, he yeah, yeah still went ahead and did all this yeah yeah well yeah. that's what i'm saying like mm-hmm. it's, it's just there's he had that moment where he's like i'm i messed up but yeah. i guess maybe he thought there was no help or here's my just, thing if you can officially realize that you are a bad person 
you're capable of going to find help. Yeah, but if you go in and out of like manic states or say yeah, you're schizophrenic, that's true. If yeah. you're schizophrenic or something like that, you come you're go. not always in control. Yeah, you know, he could are, possibly have bipolar disorder, that's like what I was highly thinking. bipolar like, that's, disorder. It, it does seem like for people to commit atrocities like that, mm-hmm. to commit murder, like there has to be something deeply wrong with you. Yeah, like there is, you were not just normal. There's so many. Yeah. Paths. That's why it's like. That's why it's so complicated. Yeah, and that's why it's like you know we can recognize like well he knew something was wrong with him, mm-hmm. but in however this, there could have been a week where he was completely manic. Yeah. You know, and planned all this out and went and did it. Yeah, I think I read something where he was quote life of the party when working with like I don't People, know maybe he could be likable but also yeah. he could he could you know flip a switch well and at a party like a work party sure yeah. maybe like or just out and about but at work maybe professionally was, yeah. yeah professionally he was a volatile yeah co-worker makes sense it does yeah Mm-mm-mm. well that's this episode ladies and gentlemen uh we love you another sad yeah another sad one but interesting yeah another look into the uh i'm sure it's just gonna get sadder of course yeah, there's another one that i'm looking into i won't announce it yet because i'm gonna talk to you about it yeah <laughs> but yeah uh i hope you guys like this episode if you did like i said at the beginning of, of the episode like and subscribe on youtube uh apple Podcasts, spotify wherever join the facebook group the private facebook group that's where you will get detailed info you will get updates the drops you get drops yeah. um all the all the good stuff yeah that's where we probably post the most yep. you know talk the most yeah and we're i think we're pretty interactive i think so too you know i try to be yeah community starting to be interactive too that's like that's that's what's fun yeah, yeah more people are starting to like talk and everything yeah. so that's really cool i mentioned this to you uh Earlier this week, I was like, I love the fact that people are commenting saying, I can't wait for this one. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. so, that, like, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like, good. Yes. <laughs> good, 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 good. And that's what we want. That makes me motivated to make the episodes yeah. better. Do more. Yeah. Do better, too. Yeah. Do yeah. better. Cool. All right. Well, um, that's it. That's it. Josh, thanks for being here. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Always. Hope to come back next week. Always. You know. Unless you get, you know, dealing with the succubus again. Oh, you know, there was those times that I was stuck. You know, I got lost, I think, in the woods looking for feral people. Yeah. Those were the down days, man. Yeah. The succubus, though. No get you. That, well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Shout out to Magic Mind once again. Yeah. We we'll hope to uh, work with you in the future, of course. Um, but yeah. Everybody, watch your back. It's cryptic out there. <laughs>